All right. We'll go ahead and give everybody a little bit of time to get on here and everything and try and get everything set up. Took us a little bit again. Got a few of them on there with us. I'd like to say good morning to everybody, and it's good to be with you once again. We thank you for tuning in. Uh, we'd ask if you would just uh, maybe share it around with your friends right now and get some time to get everybody in here. Uh, we'll share a portion of God's Word here in a little bit. Uh, you know, once again, we want to ask everybody to remember those in prayer that are that are sick right now. Uh, still plenty of them, and a lot of um, families that have lost loved ones over this past week and everything. So we want to remember each and every one of them. Uh, so. Uh, just uh, as we can kind of get ready and get started, young with y'all's uh, y'all's uh, prayer request on there. Uh, you know, I was thinking this morning as we was getting ready for this, and you know, we always ask for prayer uh, prayer requests and stuff. But uh, you know, what we don't really talk about praise reports much. And uh, you know, I think I think that maybe right now we probably should use this as a time. Uh, as as always, it should be our goal is to uplift one another. Uh, if you got some a praise report or something. Uh, to talk about put it on there let somebody know about it I, I think it'd be a good time for everybody to do that and uh we've got the ability to do it right now and uh you know what i just want to thank the lord for being good to me and uh you know what everything he's done for me in my life and uh you know what uh, we've had ups and downs but uh you know what he's been the same god all the way through and uh you know i, I was reading scripture this morning very familiar scripture and i really didn't have it marked to uh to to, to read it to you but it, I, i'm gonna read it to you because i believe it's gonna be an encouragement and uh uh, I believe that it's very familiar once again and uh, something that we've read maybe from time to time. Uh, but you know, I, I think we need a reminder about it and I'm, I'm going to go ahead and share it with you. But over in 1 Corinthians, the fourth chapter, I believe it is. Get there here in just a minute. Well, I did not have it marked here. But anyway, I, this morning we was reading it, and uh, you know, when, at this point in time, I think that there's a lot of people, and, that, and of course, um, I think we're all kind of guilty of this from time to time, is that we think that we've been uh, put down so much that it's kind of hard to continue on with anything, and uh, you know, the mo and it's, it's Second Corinthians chapter four, excuse me, but uh, you know, and there's a promise in the scripture always given, and I believe in everything in life, no matter what it is. Good morning, everybody. It's good to see everybody on here again. Um, but I, I was I was sitting there thinking, uh, you know, at, at this point in time, to, to someone that, that could sing down and out, uh, you know, and I, and I know with the loss of loved ones, uh, with, with um, the pandemic going around, we're not going to ignore that. I'm not going to quit talking about it. But, uh, you know, and it, it's just so many things that are going through people's uh, lives right now. And it's real easy to feel defeated. But, you know, I know that the Word of God has a promise for everything that can uplift us and make us better and do us. Uh, and, and put us in the center of God's will once again that we can continue on in his way no matter what the circumstance is and I, and I, I, I do my best to try to make sure that I, I preach that I, I think in some shape, form or fashion every way I believe when a man preaches that Jesus sort of come out at one way or the other if you're not doing that then you're not preaching but uh, you know but in the, in the preaching of the message of, of the gospel of Jesus Christ uh, there's a storyline in that uh, is for those that, that, are, that are down now those that are in dire state uh, though in, in the lost condition, uh, uh, there is a way that God has prepared through His Son Jesus Christ that, uh, that if you come to accept Him as your personal Savior, you have life and have life everlasting. And uh, you know, and, and that right there is a, is a gloom story that's, tur that's turned into uh, uh, one that is glorious. And uh, you know what? So if I could ever think about that state right there, is that any time uh, that we're going through something like this, that the, the Word of God has got something in it to uplift us and give us where we need to be. But I was reading the Scripture this morning. It says in Burton. Chapter 4, 2 Corinthians, verse 8. It says, We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, and not in but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. And I, I'm going to tell you that scripture this morning. Now, you can take it for however you want to. Uh, you know, that that's a scripture that I that I needed this morning. Uh, you know, it, life it happens, and it comes at you hard sometimes. And uh, you know what? But it, the word of God is there to withstand every storm. It's there to uplift in any any given point in time uh, uh, that you that you stand in need, even though you may not even know that you need it. Uh, you know that that's why I think a man ought to stay in the Word of God and ought to stay read up, studied up, and prayed up, uh, because you know there's going to come a point in time to where it's it's going to fall into place. The Word of God is not irrelevant. Uh, you know what it, it it is the most relevant thing that we have in life as we know it. It is the truth, and uh, you know I've seen a lot of argument over the truth here lately, and uh, 
You know, I, I don't know where we're going to go with this today. I, you know what, I just want to tell you what the Lord has laid on my heart. But, uh, you know what, the argument over truth and lies and uh, things that are going on, and uh, uh, you know what, it's hard to sometimes know what to believe, but if you stay in the Word of God and in the center of God's will, I believe the truth will always bear itself out And uh, uh, because He is truth. And if He's in you, uh, uh, then the truth is in you. And I believe that you'll be, it'll be revealed to you. So don't worry about those things. And uh, uh, you know what, I'm not saying that, uh, it, that it ain't uh, wise to be informed, to stay uh, uh, focused on what the task is at hand. You and I, we don't need to be focused on what's going on tomorrow or what happened yesterday. We need to be focused on what's going on right now. And if we do that, I believe that the Lord's going to lead us through. And uh, you know what? His Word is there to promise it to us. So if, if you need to see it and write and go to the Word of God, uh, we'll pull open your King James Version uh, Word of God and uh, just begin to read it. And I believe that it'll reveal to you and it'll let you know. And uh, you know what? If you've got, if you've got a fear or anxiety in your life, I, I believe it can get rid of it for you. I believe it, I, I believe it'll settle you down. It, it'll put you where you need to be. Sometimes we just be, need to be reminded uh, uh, that we need to go to the Lord in prayer. And uh, you know what? Search all things out in prayer and uh you know i was thinking uh uh we're, we're looking at the time that we're in right now and things that are being said things that are being done we never thought would be and uh you know I, I'm, I'm sitting here thinking this whole time though uh the word of god tells us plainly anything that's done without prayer anything that any decision that's ever made uh without consulting the lord first uh you know what it's always going to lead to dismal uh, uh circumstances and uh you know I, i'm sitting here um reading over this story that, that I that I thought of and all this right here. And uh, and you know what, what kind of God we serve? Uh, you know what, he's an awesome God, one that's able to do all things, I believe. And I, uh, you know what, that's why I trust in him uh, because there's things out of my control uh, that I put in his hands. But uh, you know what, he he is a uh, God that has that ability to do all things, but he's a God that also had the, has the ability to know all things. And uh, uh, you know, when that, this morning I, I was uh, sitting here pondering all this in my mind and uh, uh, praying about it and thinking uh, uh, maybe what, where the message was going to go because I'll be honest with you, I, don't, I didn't really know and I'm not going to say that I know now. I just know the scripture's been laid on my heart and the thought that the Lord's placed upon me and uh, uh, you know, when I, I begin to uh, to realize this morning and I, I know it's been something we've realized plenty of times throughout our life, there's nothing uh, that you can hide from God. There will not be any sin uh, they, 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 they get swept under the rug. There will not be anything uh, that will be left undone. And uh, you know what? God has been a God that whenever he does something, he does it all the way. Uh, he makes sure that uh, at, at, at every particular place in his plan, uh, uh, things are executed to a T. Uh, they're not, you know, there's no loose ends. Uh, and you know what? I believe that salvation was continued upon that is that uh, uh, when Jesus uh, uh, came into this world, he lived a life and uh, a perfect sinless life. Uh, he, he eventually got down to the point uh, when he accomplished all things that he gave his life on that cross that you and I had opportunity. Uh, everything was done. It was finished. It was tied up. Uh, uh, God sealed it all the way uh, uh, through his son Jesus. And I'm going to tell you this morning, uh, if you've got that salvation about you, then uh, you've got to know right now that God, whenever he's the one that doesn't leave anything undone, uh, uh, he's not going to overlook sin. Sin's not going to be overlooked. So this morning, we're going to go to the Lord in prayer. And after that, uh, uh, we're going to get into the message. Dear Lord, we'd like to thank you for this day. Uh, thank you for everything you've given us, dear Lord. We thank you for another opportunity to gather in your name this morning. And uh, we pray, dear Lord, that you just have your way in the midst of this service. And uh, uh, that you just apply it to the word, dear Lord, as you know that uh, you've already spoken it yourself, dear Lord. And uh, maybe it can enter into our hearts the way uh, uh, that you intended on it going, dear Lord. We just uh, uh, thank you for the forgiveness of sins. We thank you uh, uh, for so many times we failed to come short. Uh, uh, we know that it, it's, it's more than we can probably number right now, dear Lord. But uh, uh, but you're a long-suffering God. We, we thank you for that. Uh, and, and, and at this point, uh, the only thing that we can feel is sorrowful uh, uh, for how many times that we've let you down. But we pray, dear Lord, uh, uh, that you just begin to strengthen us up, build us up, put us where we need to be, uh, that we may be able to execute the way that you'd have us be in uh, this given time that we're living in. Uh, uh, we know that uh, uh, that any other time wouldn't have been good enough. Is it? Uh, it's the time that you appointed, the time that you placed us in, uh, uh, that we're living in right now, that uh, uh, that you can begin to work in our lives, and then most of all, that we can work for you in this world uh, uh, that's lost and dying every day. We pray, dear Lord, for those, uh, uh, maybe they're in that condition this morning. Uh, uh, they don't know you in a free part of forgiveness of sin. We pray, dear Lord, uh, uh, maybe something will go out. And maybe something will be said uh, or something will be done. Maybe a testimony given or, or something like that that can happen. I believe all things can happen through you. And we pray this morning, uh, uh, when it does, we pray that it goes out to the hearts of those uh, uh, that don't know you and that they can realize right now uh, that there's a turning point that can take place. And we pray, dear Lord, uh, uh, that maybe that'll happen for each and every one of us right now, dear Lord. We know uh, uh, that we can all stand and grow a little closer to you. And, uh, and that's what our prayer is this morning. Maybe that our hearts will draw nigh unto you. Uh, uh, in these last days, we do believe we're living in, and uh, uh, we know that it can't be much longer. And uh, uh, we know we know the, nor the time nor the hour that you'll 
uh, send your son back for us, dear Lord, but we're watching and waiting. And uh, uh, that we pray that each and every one of us in the in the church, dear Lord, will continue to have our eyes upon that, not worried about things uh, that can get us sidetracked sometimes, dear Lord. And uh, uh, so many times we lose sight of where we're uh, where the goal is. And uh, uh, let us keep our eyes upon you, dear Lord, this morning as we begin to uh, uh, get into your word a little bit, dear Lord. We just ask that you just expound it to us uh, in a mighty way. We ask that you remember those uh, uh, maybe that are, have the ailment of the body this morning, dear Lord, whatever it is. And uh, uh, we know that you know all needs this morning as you know all things, dear Lord. We pray uh, uh, that you just give them peace, comfort uh, in this time. Maybe a little bit of joy uh, I can be instilled on them, dear Lord, by hearing the word. And uh, uh, we thank you for that word that it is able to stand true uh, uh, no matter what's going on, no matter what uh, uh, false lies might be taught today, dear Lord. We pray uh, uh, that you just uh, uh, allow us to stand upon your word and hide it in our hearts, dear Lord, uh, that we know uh, uh, the truth is from a lie, dear Lord. We pray this morning uh, uh, for those, once again, uh, that are out there that are teaching uh, and bringing forth the truth of the word of God, dear Lord, we pray uh, that you just strengthen them, uh, uh, build them up, give them what they need uh, in this time, dear Lord, that many be saved uh, uh, for it's everlastingly too late. We ask you to forgive us where we failed and come short so many times. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right. Well, this morning, like I said, uh, uh, you know, I, I believe the time we're in, living in the day and the hour, uh, uh, you know, that it's relevant to the word of God and uh, it always is no matter where you turn to it and uh you know, a lot of things that we think that these stories, are they're outdated. But, uh, you know, over in the book of Joshua, a uh, very familiar scripture, once again, not giving you anything new. And uh, I've heard this preached on many a times. Uh, but you know what? There was a time in the, in the uh, as Joshua was leading the people, the children of Israel right here. And uh, uh, you know what? And I believe they went through one of the greatest battles in the beginning of the book of Joshua right here. Uh, uh, that They fought in uh, one that uh, I believe we hear as children. And uh, you know what? It's a very well uh, known story about the battle of Jericho and how Jericho was won and how God uh, uh, led the people. Uh, Joshua at the helm of them. But uh, it was God all the way. And Joshua was one that was a strong leader uh, because he recognized that God was that leadership. And, uh, you know, at this point in time, I, I can see the children of Israel are riding on that high horse. And, uh, uh, you know what, they're at, they're at the top of, of, of the pinnacle right here. I think they are. And, uh, uh you know, just by the, by the, by the uh, feeling I get by reading the word of God. And, uh, you know, as the children were there and they were in that point in time, uh, uh you know, I, I, there was things that took place and, uh, uh we know how the story goes and uh, we'll, we'll just kind of get into it, touch bases on it here in a little bit. Uh, uh, but there were there was things that took place that God uh, did not be it, and I, you know, as I was reading that scripture to you this morning out of Corinthians, right there, uh, we have a guarantee, being the children of God, by, uh, by being accepted in, by being born again by His Son Jesus Christ, and uh, uh, you know what, we have a guarantee right there that uh, uh, those tr those battles come, uh, uh, the victor will always be the one that, that trusts in the Lord Jesus, and. Uh, uh, you know what, I believe that's the same way for Joshua. And I, you know what, I've always, there's been one thing about Joshua, I always noticed when God began to call him, whenever he said that his servant Moses was dead, he told Joshua, I gave him strict instructions to follow by a plan that God had laid out. And you know what, it wasn't, it, it wasn't up to him to, not to deviate to the left or to the right, uh, is to stay on the straight and narrow path that God has set before him. And if he'd done that, uh, he would have good success. And, uh, you know, this morning as I was beginning to think about what all that he told Joshua, and, uh, uh, there come a point in time to where uh, right after the greatest battle that, that they had faced thus far, uh, uh, you know, when they won that battle in Jericho, that they went up and uh, uh, they went into the to the children of, uh, of, of Ai, I think it was what it was, and uh, uh, you know, and as they begin to go up, uh, uh, you know what they they ran them right out, tail tucked between their legs, and uh, uh, you know what they, they they backed off. They said they even smote a, a few of them there, and uh, uh, you know they they had no success when it came to this point. And uh, uh, you know what there was something that changed in that given point in time. There was something that took place, and I believe that each and every one of us need to realize this morning. Uh, uh, you know what, no matter what uh, battles might be won, and I believe there'll be. Plenty of victory for the little children of God. I believe it's a victory every day to wake up and God bless you with a new day. Uh, uh, you know what? And I, I think that a lot of times that our own defeat uh, uh, that we face is the battle of our mind. And uh, You know what? I believe that the Lord, when he saved my soul uh, as a young boy, uh, uh, you know what? He cleaned me up. He sanctified me. He set me apart from the world. He filled me with his Holy Spirit that I'd be able to go out into a world and have those victories in life. Uh, so, you know, uh, I know that Jesus done a full work in my heart. I know that he done something uh, that the world couldn't do. Uh, there wasn't anybody in my family, my friends. Uh, uh, there wasn't enough possessions in this life to give me what Jesus gave me that day. And you know, when I, as I know that heart was cleaned up, it was sanctified. And uh, uh, you know what? It was given all those things. A lot of times... Uh, Defeat comes uh, uh, through the mind. I have a firm belief about me that the Word of God teaches us uh, the devil can't have what, what, what is God's. And uh, 
Uh, you know what? And I, we we can uh, uh, test that by the book of Job and uh, uh, read all things that he went through and uh, like that. But God was straightforward with Satan. Uh, you can't have what's mine. And, uh, you know, whenever I gave my heart to the Lord, it became his. Uh, you know, he made a change in my life. He, he made me into a new creature uh, in his son Jesus. And, I, you know, as I'm thinking about this right now, the battle of the mind, why is it the battle of the mind? Because a lot of times that's where Satan uh, tries to enter. Uh, you know what? If we face times where we feel like we're knocked down, we're uh, drugged through the mud, and uh, uh, you know what? We don't feel like we're, we can get up anymore. We can do the things that we uh, uh, once did. And, uh, you know, I know we all go through them, them scenarios in life. Uh, uh, you got to know right now that, that, that God already made the statement that, that, that Satan couldn't have what was his. And, uh, you know, as I was thinking about that this morning, Joshua, it got down to the point after this uh, success uh, had turned into failure right here. And, uh, you know, it began to come about at a, at a point in time to where he needed to make a decision uh, of what he would do. And uh, you and I are faced with a decision every day. Uh, you know what? When you have the blessing of waking up every day, I believe that each and every one of us have this decision to make. We need to decide who we're going to serve. Uh, you know what? We decide every day that. Why, why did I say that after I just said uh, that the devil couldn't have what, the, what is the Lord's? Well, you know, I know the Lord saved me. He sanctified me. He cleaned me up. He made. He took all those things away. I uh, cast as far as east is from the west. And, uh, uh, you know, what to be remembered no more. And uh, I was a new creature right then. But each and every day, because I have my own free moral will that God gave me because of the creation of man that he started in the very beginning of time. He does not deviate from what he done. He did not make a mistake. So therefore, it's still there today. So each and every day, I have a decision to make to wake up and to serve the Lord. And the only way that I know to start that, the only way that I know to ignite that fire each and every day is to talk to him. I, I know to go in prayer and uh, to begin to, to get down to the point to where I can uh, uh, get to my humblest and, and begin to speak to him and I, ask him to come in and uh, and uh, search the things out in my life, make sure that I'm doing things right. And uh, that's what a man of God would do that is in tune with God. But, uh, you know, oftentimes, though, well, we know that's not always the case. We, we, don't, do, we don't do that. And, uh, you know what, shame on us for it. And, uh, and any of us today that say that we do that all the time, I, I believe that we need to check ourselves. I, you know what, because I don't think that's the way it goes. Because, you know, uh, there's a lot of things that happen, and, I, and I'm not going to get political. Uh, you know, it's hard to not be political these days, but... Uh, you know, at the same time, as I look at our country right now, and I look at even our churches sometimes, with what, what the decisions that we make, and I know, I know what by what was is within me. Uh, not saying that I'm any better than anybody else. I know that I ain't always made the right decision. Uh, but every decision that I've prayed about has been the right decision. Uh, you know what? Every decision the church prays about is going to be the right decision. Every decision we make as a country is going to be the right decision if we pray about it. If we take it to the Lord, and you know. Uh, whenever I see things going on right now that are, I know that are against the Word of God, and it only comes by being studied up, ready, and prayed up on these things, I, I know they wouldn't prayed about. And you know, uh, whenever that happens, I, I believe that's that's the key entry point to where Satan uses to get in there. And uh, and I'm gonna tell you right off the bat, and I'm gonna be the first one to tell you, and I believe you can read it, back it up with the Word of God. And you'll hear many preachers say it. Uh, the devil never made us do anything. The devil did not make you sin. Uh, you sit in on your own free accord. And when sin enters in, God will not have no part with it. And it will never be okay with God. Now, there will not be any sin that goes unnoticed. You know what? In the end time, whenever the judgment day comes, whenever that is for us, I believe we'll stand to give an account for each and everything we've done. Not one thing is going to be left undone. And last week, we talked about plenty of this. And maybe named it off by name. I believe in calling sin by name. And you know what? But there's another thing I need to echo this week. I think we've said for a couple times is, is he is not going to be understanding of your situation. You know what situations that we're placed in. You know, I, in our prayer this morning, uh, uh, we made mention because it's been on our heart and our mind all day. Is uh, a lot of times we think, uh, well, why are we born and living in such evil times right now? Why couldn't we have been somewhere else? Well, this is the point of God time that God has gave us. God has given us the ability to live in a time, and you know, and, and it being so evil and things like that, we think that uh, you know it, it gets us down to the point to where we're defeated. We think that to the point to where you know there's not much else we can do. Uh, uh, nobody's listening. Nobody's going to hear. Nobody's going to change. But you know, at this point in time, uh, I believe that change can always take place as long as there is a movement of the Holy Spirit that comes through people uh, uh, that pray and that are ready. That remnant still remains. God's Spirit still dwells here. 
Uh, you know what? There's one reason, one reason only why I believe that the Lord has not come back yet. I believe it's because the remnant's still here, uh, still praying, still filled with that Holy Spirit. Uh, the Word's still going out through the power and demonstration of that same uh, Spirit that we talked about. And uh, you know what? And knowing that today, I believe people can change. I believe people can make a decision uh, to, to, to move from one side to the other. Uh, but you know, I'm going to tell you this morning, uh, it's not going to happen though. Until sin is to begin to be recognized. We preached about sin last week. We're going to preach about it again this week. Uh, uh, we need more preaching about sin. We need more preaching against sin. And uh, uh, so, you know, as we get into the word right here, we're going to read real quick and, uh, uh, you know, just a few scriptures. But, uh, you know, what Joshua's down, this is the leader. Uh, this is the man at the top. Uh, you know, uh, God put him there. And, uh, you know, as he began to call out, uh, you know, what there, there's some actions that took place. You know what, when Joshua, he, he didn't know how to take defeat at this point. Uh, you know what, he won that big battle and then defeat came his way. But you know what, there was one thing about Joshua you and I need to recognize today. Is that when defeat came, he knew that wasn't of God. God is not, never going to face defeat. He's never going to be the losing end of any argument or any battle. Uh, his, uh, victory is always there with God. So, you know, it, 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 there may be a point in time where you feel defeated, but recognize what the scriptures say. The scripture says we might be put, we might be put down. We might be uh, beaten down to the point to where we think uh, uh, that we are. But there will never be a time to where we're left alone. There will never be a time uh, to where we're defeated to the point where, uh, uh, you know, what God has left us. And, you know, I'm going to tell you at this point in time when Joshua uh, begins to uh, call out, it says, And Joshua rent his clothes and fell to the earth upon his face before the ark of the Lord and until the even time. And he and the elders of Israel and put dust upon their, their heads. And Joshua said, Alas, O Lord God, wherefore hast thou at all brought this people over Jordan to deliver us into the hand of the Amorites, to destroy us? Would God, would to God we had been content and dwelt on the other side of Jordan? O Lord, what, what shall I say when Israel turneth their backs before their enemies? For the Canaanites and the inhabitants of the land shall hear of it, and shall even, even us around, and cut off our name from the earth. And what wilt thou do unto that, thy great name? And the Lord said unto Joshua, Get thee up, wherefore liest thou upon thy face? And I, I'm going to stop right there before we go any further, but I want to know uh, this morning, that scripture that we just read, because it's become to your knowledge, it, you, maybe you've read that scripture before, maybe you haven't. But now it's to your knowledge uh, that God had placed it upon man through his spirit to write that down and let us know. Let us know right then and there that there may be times that you're put down uh, and there may be hard times that you face, but you'll never be defeated if you're on the Lord's side. Well, what we see right here is that he first and foremost reminds Joshua. He tells him, he said, And the Lord said unto Joshua, Get thee up, wherefore liest thou upon thy face? You know what, well, he, he didn't understand why Josh was doing this. And I, and I can say when I say that, I know that the Lord understands all things. Uh, but you know what, he, he was not going to accept the fact that Joshua was willing to lay down on this. So, you know, as I was thinking about this scripture this morning, when Joshua, he made a very wise decision. The first thing he went, he went to the Lord. And he wanted to know. He It, it wasn't uh, cursing the Lord. He wasn't saying, why, Lord, are you leading me through this necessarily? Uh, you know what? He asked the question. It was there. But, you know, he made a statement. He said, uh, what am I going to do, pretty much? He said, what am I going to do uh, uh, whenever the children of Israel begin to turn their backs on their enemies? Uh, uh, when this word gets out and then our enemies hear about this, uh, uh, they're going to come even more. What shall I do from this point on and I you know what therefore I believe Joshua was in a state right here uh, uh, you know what he was so close to the Lord I believe and, you know this is the closeness but even though as close as he was he still needed to talk to him he still needed to go and, ha and have communion with him and when he talked to the Lord he, he began to rent his clothes he fell to the, uh, his face upon the earth and uh, began to cry out put dust upon their heads uh, but when he talked to him uh, he talked to him willing to accept whatever was coming but you know this morning uh if we think that we can get down to that point, if we think that we're, that, that we're in that state right now to where we can talk to the Lord and we can pray about it and ask Him, uh, what are we going to do when the Lord answers back and gives us the very same word that's been there from the very beginning, the one that points out the sin that's in our life, the one that points out and, and states the facts against the, the lies that a lot of times that are facing in people's life. You know, I, I'm sitting here listening to the things going on right now, the, the things, talk, like I said, talking about truth and lies. 
Uh, you know what? Uh, we know that the lie is not of God. Uh, uh, you know, we know that Satan, he's the father of the lies. And, uh, uh, you know what? And, uh, and as we know this right now, uh, we know that all things are conceived out of his mouth and uh, uh, not of God's whenever it comes to the point of lying. Uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, arguments of the truth get us in trouble because uh, we don't know what the truth is. You know what? The word tells us, the Lord said it himself, that the truth would set us free. Uh, and the knowledge of the truth, having the knowledge of the truth, uh, uh, gives us a point of decision in our life to where we can change and make right now uh, uh, what may seem dismal and turn it into something that can be glorious in the sight of the Lord. And now, uh, you know, I, I'm, on, I'm looking at Joshua right here, great leader that he was, and that why he was a great leader is because he was willing to accept that he was man, that he was at the, at the, at the, uh, uh, the, the mercy of God, uh, you know what, I think that if any leader could subject themselves to God the way that Joshua did, it would lead us to in, in a way uh, uh, that would be in a way pleasing to God and it would lead us into prosperous ways just that was pros uh, that was promised uh, uh, to Joshua. So, you know, as I'm sitting here thinking, I, and I'm not talking about the United States of America right now, I, I, I want to talk about the church, you know, because uh, uh, I'm going to tell you, I, I, I'm, an, I'm an American, I love, I, I love this country, I, I, you know, I love everything about it, but I know that there is something, it's just like uh, in the house of God. You know, in the house of God, we have maybe a place that we go to, we worship, uh, uh, you know, what beautiful places that uh, are set aside, that are erected, dedicated to God that we go to. Uh, but we must know by the word of God, it tells us that that is not what makes the church. What makes the church is those that dwell in, those that go there, those that have the spirit dwelling within them. That's what makes up the church. So it's the contents of it. So, you know, this country, as much as I love it today, uh, the only way, the only way that we're going to decide right now that anything's going to change, the only way that unity can even be talked about, and I will tell you, the Word of God is all about unity. Unity is not just a decision that we make right now. Unity is a lifestyle. Unity is something we choose when we accept uh, Jesus Christ as our personal Savior. When we're born again, we're given the, the ability to unify one with another, one mind, one accord, to worship Him in spirit and in truth. And without that, we don't have unity. So simply making the decision and the call to unity must take a place within each and every one of us. And when we decide that, uh, uh, you know, there's got to be some cleaning up. There's got to be house clean within our own selves. And uh, uh, you know what? We know what the scripture goes on to tell us about. It, the, the problem was right here, what the change it was between victory and defeat was that sin came in the camp. That sin took place in people's lives. God does not let sin go, go unnoticed. You know what, and I'm going to tell you, uh, we have a cry for something better. We have a cry for things to change. But whenever we're, we want things to change, uh, uh, you know what, God is an unchangeable God. Uh, he has no need to change. He's all righteousness. So therefore, the changing point needs to come with me and you. It needs to come within our own individual selves. The changing point needs to be that we find out what is separating us and get it removed from the side and continue on the way the Lord wanted to. So, you know what? The difference in victory and defeat, uh, uh, you know what? Uh, the answer is within our heart, but the problem is in our minds. Uh, uh, we are defeated ourselves by the things that we think. Uh, uh, you know what? A lot of times whenever things uh, uh, begin to happen to us, uh, all we want to do is throw a penny for it and get down upon it to where, hey, it's just going to uh, ruin us down to the core. Now, uh, uh, you know what? This old heart of mine, uh, uh, that was given to me to be able to love and to unify one with another. Uh, uh, you know what is oftentimes to uh, becomes toxic uh, by the things that I think, by the things that I allow myself to uh, take in. Uh, uh, you know what, if you live in that defeated state, uh, you know what, that is a sad scenario today. The sad scenario is that a man, when he is put down, is willing to live there. He's willing to stay there. And, uh, uh, you know what, I'm going to tell you. Uh, we talked about this before, but and we've all faced a scenario as, uh, uh, where somebody brings up our, our past uh, uh, sins, the things that we've done in time past. And, uh, uh, you know what? Uh, uh, there is but one difference in me and any other individual that tries to live their life with the Lord, the ones that have been, uh, that, that have been born again. There's only one difference with it, uh, between me and the one that's out there in the world committing sin today. The only difference is, is that I've been forgiven. The only difference is, is the Lord uh, had given me a point in time. He, he gave me the ability to go down to Him humbly, a broken heart and a contrite spirit, call out on Him and ask Him to be Lord and Savior of my life, to take those things from me. That is the only difference. Now, there's, no, there's nothing in my life that makes me any, any more special than the salvation that I have in Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. You know what I'm going to tell you? I, I, was, I was thinking about that right there. Is that, uh, hey, uh, you know what? Knowing that, I, that I'm not above anybody else. 
Knowing that I, then just, uh, I believe I can place myself in Joshua's scenario right here. He was the leader of the children of Israel appointed by God, but he knew that he was just a man, that all things were out of his control except the Lord be on his side. There was no victory to be had. And you know what? There was something that took that away from him. You know what? Uh, Joshua had Joshua seen, not necessarily. You know what? The only failure and shortcoming that Joshua was aiming himself down to, I'm not going to say that he got down to that point, but uh, the Lord reminded him, he set him and corrected him on this path. The only point was, was that he laid his face down on the earth and tried to give up on God. You know what? And I'm going to tell you that right now, as there's some times that I believe that we get in that scenario, you know what? If we ever have failure going on, you can rest assured you find somebody that, get, that has given up on God, given up on what he can do. Not going to say he threw him off to the side. I believe in repentance. I believe somebody can come back. I, I believe in, a, in, a, in, a, in living a repentant life. I failure and shortcomings that happens, but I go unto the Lord because we have an advocate with the Father. That's what it's about. But whenever the Lord told him to get, get up, he said, get thee up. He said, I, I'm, I'm going to tell you, I, I was thinking about that right there. And I, he, he, I believe what was going through the Lord's mind and what he was going through his heart right now was he's letting him know, hey, uh, you know what? I didn't save you. I, I didn't sanctify you. I didn't set you apart from the rest. I didn't give you all these lands to go out and conquer and, and, and promise just as Joshua echoed right there. He said uh, uh, that we had been content and dwell on the other side of Jordan. Uh, and he was looking to get there because God promised him that. You know what? God didn't save you this morning. He, he, he didn't save you uh, to go out and be defeated in this world. He, he saved you to be able to overcome this world because greater is he that is in you than he is in the world. We know old Satan tries the best that he can. We know that things are thrown our way, but he did not save you to be defeated. He did not save you to be there. And I'm going to tell you, and if you are there, I'm going to tell you it's because you've laid your face down and you've tried to give up on God. I know it's not an easy thing to take, uh, uh, but you know what? We've already made it clear to you. And, uh, you evidently, if you're still on this video, you've decided uh, that you're going to be willing to accept what the Word of God says. Well, the Word of God says that failure only comes whenever sin's there. Whenever things have, have, have entered into your life that shouldn't be there. You know what? I'm a born again child of God. Said it last week. I'm going to say it again. The word of God tells us that a man walks in the spirit the same as a perfect man. It is meant for you and I to live a sinless life. We cannot do it. It's not going to be. It, we know that it's going to happen. We got our failures and shortcomings. But we are intended on living in the spirit of God. So what we see right here. The next what goes on. It says he makes known what is going on. That's why I say sin will not go unnoticed because God calls it out and tells you to find it out. He says, Israel has sinned and they all have also transgressed my covenant and I will com and, and which I commanded them. For they have even taken of the accursed thing. They have also stolen and disassembled also and they have put it even among their own self. Therefore, the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies but, the, but turn their backs before their enemies because they were accursed. Neither will I be with you anymore except ye destroy the accursed from among you. And I want you to notice what that scripture said because there's a lot of teaching going around today, a lot of false teaching. Now, and, and a lot of our churches in this area, it ain't across the country, it's in this area. It says, I will, not, neither will I be with you anymore except, and that means, there's an exception there, except ye destroy the curse from among you. So you know what I'm going to tell you, I, you, you think about uh, the curse, what is the curse? And I, you know what, I believe that uh, in the beginning of the time that whenever God created all things and uh, he placed man in the garden and gave man uh, commandments to watch over everything that he put there, uh, he told him that he could eat of the trees and uh, uh, you know what, but there was one that he could not. And uh, and we know that this is where sin came in to be uh, uh, because whenever the woman took of the tree, then the man partook of the same sin right there. Because of that, uh, uh, the curse was placed and uh, uh, you know, you know what? There was a, a, a sign on that tree. There was a sign placed upon it uh, uh, to let know the, about the curse. And that, that curse, we know that Jesus, when he came, uh, he lived in on this world. He walked in uh, that sinless life we talked about earlier. Uh, uh, you know what? We know that his end uh, uh, in this walk of life and that fleshly body uh, uh, was to be hanged upon a tree. The sign was placed there uh, to be able to offer a, a forgiveness, uh, to get away uh, uh, from the curse that is placed upon there. Now, uh, uh, you know what? I believe that today uh, what we see right here is the children of Israel. Israel, uh, uh, whenever they have seen defeat, uh, uh, they were only used to victory. They seen the victory at Jericho, uh, all the things that came to be, uh, what God brought them through. They were on their high horse. They thought that they could have everything. But uh, you know what? God's always had stipulation. He's always commanded obedience. 
He's always asked uh, uh, that you would come in and uh, uh, begin to accept uh, uh, his law, uh, him for what he is, because he is all righteous. And uh, uh, when you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, uh, uh, you don't just gain a title there, which I think a lot of us today uh, are trying to live by. They, they, they just want the title. Uh, you know, but I'm going to tell you, uh, with that title comes a lot of things. To be a Christian means to be Christ-like. Uh, it's within ourselves to live, uh, like I said earlier, a lifestyle. You want unity, you got to have the unity lifestyle. you got to be born again. Uh, I have that blood applied to live in that way. Uh, and you know what? Whenever sin is there, uh, uh, there it's never going to have unity. You're never going to have uh, uh, the, the fullness of God within you. And you know what? what he said right here? He said, hey, uh, Israel sin. There's something there. There is something that has taken place. Uh, there is something that, that is there that I will not have a part with. Uh, I'll not be there. Uh, I said that I'd be with you always, and you did, but you not, could not defer from the left or the right. You had to go down the path that I've set you on. And whenever you sin against God, whenever you decide uh, that you're going to go, and even if you think it's the smallest thing, you think just because it's 2020, we can do all these things. Named them off last week. Got a lot of things going on right now. Hey, I'm going to tell you right now, one thing that's on my heart and my mind this morning, uh, it, and it's been on my heart and my mind because I think it's the biggest pandemic we got going on, and you've heard me talk about it before, is abortion. You know what? I, uh, we just had an election this year, and, I, and I'm going to go out and say it, and, I, and I, 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 I'm not going to apologize for it. Uh, if, if you voted for someone that stands for abortion, you might as well be. You might as well be a part of it. And, and I'm going to tell you right now, the Word of God lets us know uh, that, 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 is not of the word, that is not of God. Uh, uh, murder is, is a sin against God. And if you've done that, you ought to be ashamed and you ought to find an altar somewhere. Uh, because you know what? God's people don't do that. Christians don't vote that way. Christians don't live their lives according to that. And you know what? You can get mad all you want to, but uh, that's the Word of God. That's not politics. And you know what? If we defer from that today, uh, uh, you, you want to know what the problem is right now? If we want to diagnose what's going on with this country right now, it's because we've allowed too much sin to come in and we've forgotten God. We mourn uh, uh, whenever ungodly men uh, uh, pass away. I, you know, you open the TV up right now. How many uh, of these celebrities and stuff have died? And uh, uh, you got a great morning of people going over this. And, uh, and I'm sure I want to be there with the, with the, the families and the, what they're going through. Uh, my heart goes out to them. My prayers are with them. Uh, uh, but at the same time, we'll mourn a man uh, that we know lived in ungodly life uh, and denounce God a lot of times, uh, uh, but we won't mourn the fact that our country has got so far away from God uh, uh, that we don't even know uh, that it's okay to speak His name anymore. You know, I'm going to tell you, I get sick of it, and I, I'm sure that any Christian uh, that has any gall about them at all uh, is getting sick of it. And it, and it does us good to get sick of it. I, I'm not talking about an anger, but uh, you know what? It's good to be angry against sin. It's good to hate sin. If you hate sin, if you hate it enough, you'll put it out of your life. And that's what God's asking this morning. He, he's asking that we get serious enough to where we hate it, to where it disdains of the very taste that we have for it. You know what? This old fleshly body, what it wants to do, we know the Bible tells us it wants to go out and do these things. You know what? It's of our nature. We were Because of that curse that we, we talked about a minute ago. You know what? Because the, our, our, the, the, the first father, the father of all, he, it took place within him. Uh, it's in our nature. But it's not in our born again nature. It's not what I've been created to do now. What took place within me is that old man went down, that new man came up, and by knowing that today, that I live a life that's pleasing unto him by purging the sin out, by taking it out of the way. How can I do that? Because I, I don't have the ability. Joshua didn't have the ability to do that, but he needed to have it acknowledged. And then when God places it in your hands, you know, and I, I want to tell you, that, that, that was something I was thinking about this morning, and I want to kind of expound upon it. You know what? God has placed it in your hands. You know what? Salvation is not a man. Salvation is, uh, was not something I, I, that I did. You know what? Salvation came through Jesus Christ. We want to make sure that's known. But you know what? God has placed it within our hands. He's placed it within, our, within it, the makeup of ourselves, the free moral will that we have to make the decision whether we're going to go to Him and, and ask for that forgiveness to, to purge that sin out. How can we purge the sin out? We've got to go to Jesus. Jesus gets rid of it. He cleans it out. But you know what? This morning we've got the decision. And I want you to know that, 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 that God made it known that there was sin in Israel. And that they, they, they had transgressed and they had done all these things. But he ended it out right there. He gave a, a decision to be made to each and every one of us today. And this is what we're going to close out with right here. Because I, I don't know if I'm going to go any further with this. We'll explain out the rest of the story. But it says, he says, neither will I be with you anymore. I, he drew a line. God, that, see, that's one thing God has the ability to do that I think that a lot of us don't have the ability to do. And shame on us for being in the church and not being able to do that is drawing the line. 
We need to draw a line today against sin. And that's what God does. God always has done that. He said, I will not be with you anymore. And you know what? If God would have stopped there, he would have been a liar. And you know what? I'm going to tell you, God, the God that I serve does not lie. He cannot lie. He will not lie. And uh, you know, as he said, he said, I'll not be with you anymore. Well, he promised them that if, if, they, if they would go out and do these things in his name, they, hey, he'd be with them. They'd have great success. But he said right here, hey, this is where he places it in our hands. He says, except ye destroy the accursed from among you. And we know how the story goes. It goes on down. And uh, you know what? They find it out. Achan, they took something that wasn't his. You know what? And God accused him of stealing. He accused him uh, of, of, of taking the things that was not his. And they disassembled also, it says, right there, all these things. Uh, and but, but most of all, the greatest thing that, that, I, that I think that he did to transgress against God is that he placed it among them. You know, it's one thing to sin a fellow comes short of the glory of God, like we talked about last week. And uh, uh, you know what? We do, we do that from time to time. And uh, you know what? Shame on us for it. But... Uh, Thank God we have an ability to go to him and ask for forgiveness. But the shame is, the, bi the biggest problem right now with a lot of us today, and I say us because I think it's in the church, I think that's what the problem is. You know, if we are not, we're not having success, it's because we forgot what kind of God we serve because in the end, God's going to be the victor. And I, you know what, I think God winning victories all the time. And uh, you know what the problem was is that Achan placed it amongst the stuff that they already had. They placed it in the camp. He placed it amongst himself. That means he didn't repent of it. He didn't cast it out. And that's where Joshua had it placed in his hands by God to go out there and do it and to destroy it, the cursed thing from among you. And you know what? We know how it went and, we, and whether you, you agree with it or not, it's in the word of God. And I, you know what? It was a bad thing that took place because not only Achan was destroyed, but all of his family. Everything. It, it had to be completely purged out. And that's what God expects from, from you and today. If you've got sin in your life, why he will not allow any sin to go unnoticed is because he demands already. When God demands something, he don't back up on it. He demands that all sin be purged, to be taken out of the camp, to be done away with, cast out. You know what he said? Hey, if you do, if you do it, I, you know what? I'd take it away. I, 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 I'd, I'd make sure that it wasn't there. I wouldn't remember it. I, I'd be, he'd be forgetful, God, on this point. But it's up to you to make the decision whether you're going to cast it out or not. So you know what? what, what what's, the, what's the purpose of us talking this morning about sin going unnoticed? I, you know what? I... You know, I'm going to tell you, we might live in a country where sin goes unnoticed. You may go to a church that where the sin goes unnoticed. And you know what? Sometimes it's noticed and swept under the rug. But either way it goes, no matter where you're at, no matter what you're facing, God will never allow that to happen uh, within and among self. And you know what? This morning, I'm not here to please a church. I'm not here to please a country. I'm not here to please any man that ever walked the face of the earth. I'm here to please God and do the thing what he's called me to do. And that's what I'm going to do. Uh, you know what? I made that decision. He placed it within my hands to make that decision to where I would cast things out of my life and to follow after him. You know what? Whenever Jesus uh, uh, gave that commission to, to, uh, to, to, to pick up your cross and follow him, hey, you know what? Each and every day, I believe that's a process we got to take. we got to decide, hey, I'm going to serve the Lord today. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make the decision where I'm going to pray out everything, that I, every decision that comes about in my life. I'm going to pray about it. I, I, I want, I'm going to go out and I'm going to share the word of God. I'm going to do these things that involves whenever I pick up my cross and follow after him because it's exactly what he done. So, you know, this morning as I, as I was thinking about this right here, you know, I, I, we got to guard ourselves against all the things that are going on right now, and I believe the evil is growing each and every day. Uh, you know what? Now, we've talked about the deception that's out there right now. Hey, the church needs to armor themselves up. We need to be ready. We need to be, be prayed up, studied up, and ready for whenever things are brought our way. And you know what? Not stand for any lie, but stand on the truth all the time that they may be expounded and that may be shown to the world. And uh, you know what? I believe that whenever that happens, that there's going to be some people that will notice. And they'll come down to the point to where, hey, uh, they're going to make a decision that they're going to follow after him as well. And they're going to make a decision, hey, you know what? These people right here, uh, they, they've got a God that, that, that loves them, that cares about them, that has provided great success. And you know what? He's all that because he does not let it go unnoticed. And he does, does something about it. So you know what? Thank God that God didn't allow that victory to go through. He didn't allow that victory to go through until the sin was taken care of, until the conditions were met. When the, met, the conditions are met with God, I believe he'll be with you always, just like you always said he would. He's a, he's a God that stands by every promise that he ever made. And you know what, this morning, I believe that today, if you are a born-again child of God, if, you're, if you're, uh, you've are if you been engrafted in today, I, I guarantee you by what thus saith the word of God that victory will be yours. Victory is in Jesus. But you know what? If we turn our backs on our enemies, 
If we decide right then and there to lay down just because some things ain't going our way, just because uh, uh, the, the the issues of life have overtaken us, just because uh, uh, you know what we don't we we don't simply agree, we don't feel right when we hear or read something. Uh, you know what? If we want to change things because it doesn't fit the mold of our life, these things right here will lead to defeat. But I'm gonna tell you what I, I the shame is is to remain there and to continue to be defeated. So today. Uh, we're going to close out with that, and we thank each and every one of you for tuning in. Share it out the best you can. Uh, we hope to see you sometime soon, and uh, you know, I know this ain't easy. And uh, You know what? There's a lot of things that have not been, but we want to pray for each and every one of you, and uh, all those that are sick. We ask you to just uh, continue to remember the churches, remember them as they, as we begin to make these decisions, because I'm telling you right now, I, I'll be honest with you, I, I, don't, I don't know what uh, uh, decisions to make a lot of times. All I know is to pray about it, and uh and to go with it. I'm not scared. I'm not afraid of this virus. I'm not afraid of the things that are going on. But uh, you know what? I think we need to be smart. And you know what? And continue to go in that way. And if we do that, I believe the Lord will be pleased with it some way or another. You can have your opinion about that and you can go with it. But I ask everybody to begin to pray uh, for the church. Pray about the decisions that we make and that the Lord will show them to us and we'll be most of all pleasing them to Him. So let's go to the Lord in prayer and after this we'll close out. Dear Lord, we thank you for this day. Thank you for everything given us, dear Lord. We thank you once again, your word that you've been able to give us today, dear Lord. And uh, we pray that we apply it to our lives, dear Lord, that we can be able to go out there and uh, and just li live the best life that we can in front of those that uh, maybe that don't know you this morning. That would be our prayer this morning, that if anything, is that some would be able to re re receive and, uh, uh, the word. And uh, we know that sometimes it, it offends, it hurts, and uh, it goes in. But we know that by you not uh, letting sin go unnoticed, by making it known during our lives that we can have it... Uh, in our decision to make it uh, in the best decision that we've ever made in our life. Dear Lord, we thank you for our salvation and uh, we pray that someone else come to know that before it's everlastingly too late. We thank you for each and every one that was on here this morning. We pray a blessing on each and every one of them that they've received something out of this and uh, uh, maybe they can go out and they can share it uh, uh, with this lost and dying world. Uh, maybe, maybe just uh, uplift them. Uh, just uh, give them the strength that they stand in need to go maybe through this work week. Uh, if you stay, you're coming for a little while, dear Lord, and maybe we can be uh, uh, found uh, that shining light as you place us up to be, dear Lord. We thank you once again, uh, uh, for the provisions of life, uh, uh, the opportunity to come together, and we pray uh, uh, that it happen once again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. We love you, and God bless you.